Can you imagine burning candles that were made from the fat of cows and sheep? Nope. Nope. I don't even want to imagine how that smells. During the early days of civilization, however, these early versions of candles will probably be your only source of light. Hey, what's up? I'm Rakima. Welcome to Detailed Dream, where the primary focus is to expose you to the expansive world of luxury goods for yourself and your home. In today's conversation, I want to talk about the origins of the candle. One of the best ways to really understand a subject or something that you're interested in is to understand the history of it and why and how it was created. This will ultimately give you a better outlook on why things are done a certain way in today's time. The origins of the candle was a very interesting point in time of history. The way we use candles today was not at all the intended purpose with knowing how they were used in the past. Well, what is a candle? Most of us know them today as something we light for many different reasons. They make our home, our space smell better. A lot better. They bring warmth and comfort to it with scents that are amazing. Most of the time. They can be really relaxing. They can provide our space with elegance and aesthetics that elevates the look of our overall space. Candles can be many things, tailored to our own specific needs. But have you ever sat back and wondered, how did they come to be? What are the original candles? I will tell you right now, the first candles that were used were not because of their amazing smell. The word candle means a block of wax or tallow with a wick that's centered in the middle of said wax that's lit to produce a light as it burns. Simple. The existence of candles came to be because of, and thanks to, a few ancient civilizations. In 500 BC, the ancient Romans began making candles with rolled papyrus dipped in tallow. And this tallow was made from the fat of calves and sheep. Now, what if candles never evolved? We'd be walking into other people's houses thinking candles made from cow and sheep is a normal thing. Oh yeah, I just picked up this new Sir Dawn tallow candle. It's made from luxury grass-fed sheep. That sounds terrible, all jokes aside. In 221 BC, during the Qin Dynasty of ancient China, it was discovered that they used to make candles with whale fat, while ancient India made their candles with a blend of boiled cinnamon and yak butter. They probably did know, but they probably made the world's first known existence of a scented candle. Let's just say they were ahead of the curve. During these ancient times, candles were among the oldest, most traditional forms of lighting in the world. Beeswax was also making its appearance around these times as it was a much better option than the repulsive smell of tallow. Tallow also gave off a very poor lighting source and it burned way too quick. But this is what was readily available for most people during these times since it was inexpensive and easy to come by as it was just leftovers from the kitchen. Beeswax Beeswax, however, was very expensive and only reserved for the ultra-wealthy. Beeswax overall was just a much more reliable source as it produced a brighter luminance, it burned cleaner and slower, and might I add, it was odorless. I would have been sold at odorless. It was very beneficial without all the defects of tallow. Oil lamps were also around during these time periods, but the maintenance it required made it a disadvantage to the candle. It had to be filled on a regular basis. The wick needed constant adjustment that could lead to oil spills. Oil is not fun to clean up. Candles were just much more easier to maintain. Nothing to adjust and you didn't have to clean any oil. It was mainly just the horrid smell that you had to deal with, unfortunately. 3000 BC is when the proper candle with the wick was introduced, known as the taper candle, which is still very popular today. I'm pretty sure we've all seen some form of taper candle before. The long, thin candles that often comes to a point towards the top of the wick. I even keep a few for decor purposes. To be completely honest, I only have them to enhance the look of my space. I don't like burning them because of the mess the wax can create. Getting a drip guard is an amazing option to cut down on the mess of melted wax, but I just like the look of a solid taper candle and the nice quality holder that accents the look of my space. Taper candles can be used for many different things, like lighting your home, of course, special occasions, and romantic dinners. The modern taper is just a modern day version of what the Romans used when they used to roll up papyrus and repeatedly dipped it in tallow or beeswax that created the recognizable shape we see in today's tapers. The candle as we know it did not appear until the 19th century. This was the point in time in history where the modern candle was created. Candles were able to be made on a large scale to meet demands of a quickly growing population and the people started to pursue better living conditions. They were tired of smelling foul candles and wanted something better. I get it. Growth and change is imminent and it was because of the different advancements in this era that we now have our favorite luxury candle brands such as Sir Chidon, 
Diptyque, and Joe Malone, just to name a few. Around this time was also the introduction of braided wicks rather than them just being twisted. It ultimately helped produce candles that performed better and didn't require too much maintenance. This was a huge accomplishment when you think about it because there are many different styles of wicks today. I mean, for a new Joe Malone scent, for example, they go through a process of selecting one wick out of 400 different styles that worked specifically for that one scent. Talk about a tedious process. As a perfectionist, it sounds like a good time. The 1820s was the development of stearic wax, a hard, durable, clean burning wax. It's the process of extracting stearic acid from animal fatty acids. Still in the realm of using animal byproduct, but it was a lot better than tallow. Apparently it's still used today in Europe. This is my first time ever hearing of stearic wax, so if you have any experience with it, let me know in the comments. I would like to know how it compares to other waxes. And then we get to the 1850s with the introduction of paraffin wax. It's the separation of the natural occurring wax substance from petroleum that's refined to be known as paraffin. This odorless wax was used to mass produce candles that were both inexpensive and provided a better performing burn. Paraffin was highly sought after in candle making for its consistency and just made economical sense than any other resource that was available at that time. As you may know, paraffin is still widely used today with many popular luxury candle brands. Even though I don't prefer paraffin, just my preference, just my preference. I still have to acknowledge the fact that paraffin is one of the main reasons we have so many amazing luxury candles today. Towards the end of the 19th century, stearic acid was blended with paraffin to produce a more durable and long lasting candle. Now this wax blend was very popular until the introduction of the incandescent light bulb. The candle industry went into a sudden decline because people no longer needed candles as their main source of light. It's like when you're a kid and you got a new toy. Your old toys just sit to the side catching dust as you have your fun. <coughs> Wheezy? Is that you? Hey, Woody. This was definitely a dark time for candles, but this made them more of a luxury item to have in the home. Now if you had candles, it was purely because of status and because you loved the look of them. In comes the 20th century to essentially save candles. During this time with population and job booms, the growth in US oil and meat packing industry surged in byproducts that, as you guessed it, was the basic ingredients to make candles paraffin and stearic acid. It's all coming together now. It's a full circle moment. It wasn't until the mid 1980s where candles increased in popularity. They were mainly used as decor items, giving them away as gifts, and creating that warm ambiance in the home. Around the same time, interest in candles began to take off even more thanks to the development of scented candles. During the 1990s, people just couldn't get enough of candles. The candle world was booming with popularity. Who knew, just by adding a small change to a candle, just by adding a scent, would make the candle world grow as much as it did. And for the first time in over a century, cleaner burning products were being developed. One of those developments is soybean wax or soy wax. It was a more softer, slower burning wax than its ancestor paraffin. Palm and flaxseed oil also started development for candle use. Definitely a step forward in the right direction of sourcing better ingredients. Not saying all naturally derived products are sourced properly. Think I should make that clear. Wax has been sort of a touchy subject lately with everyone having their own preferences and opinions. I will always tell you to burn whatever candle you like, no matter the wax type. And that's all I'm going to say right now on wax choices. It's quite amazing to see how quickly the candle world changed in such a short amount of time. Now we get to the candles we have today. Welcome to the 21st century with an ever-growing world of candle lovers and many different candle brands to choose from. I can confidently say candles have come a very long way since their original purpose during the early era with ancient Romans and the Middle Ages. Candles are on a continued growth of popularity even though we don't use them as a main source of lighting. Today they serve a different purpose from their ancestral counterparts. Today candles are used for countless things and comes in many different forms and styles. You have your scented candles or the French term bougie parfumé. Bougie meaning candle and parfumé meaning scented. We use these scents to mainly scent our home with the most elegance of scent. I look for the best of the best when it comes to burning candles in my home. Scented candles can be used to set a certain type of mood, they can soothe senses, or they can be even given as gifts. No matter the occasion, a scented candle is always a good idea. 
And if you're feeling a little vintage or want to set a certain type of mood for your space, taper and pillar candles are still readily available pretty much anywhere and comes in so many different shapes, sizes, and colors that best fits what you're going for, as well as structural candle holders that can make pretty much any space look amazing. I prefer taper candles because they make much more of a statement in my opinion. You get a nice high quality holder for your taper, your space will look 10 times better. Tapers and pillars can be used pretty much anywhere. Your dining table, coffee table, desk, entryway, even on the floor if you have large candle holders. Just be mindful of the melting wax. But you can always get a drip tray to help with the melting wax. I honestly like my taper candles for decor purposes only. I love the tall, slender look they provide. Looking back on the history of candles, nothing has really changed aside from how they're made and the materials we use to make them. A sincere thank you to the people who had to go through the early stages of burning those repulsive candles made from animal byproducts. I would be a little upset to see what I had to go through to see people in today's time burning candles that smell like flowers and leather. But from now all the way back to those early times, that warm glow from a candle flame has never changed.